Hey guys, it's Emma. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I really want to talk about a topic that I have been thinking for a long time, and that is how do you deal with failure in your job search? How do you keep motivated even if you have failed some interviews, even if you have been rejected by your dream company? In all my previous videos, we focus on how to do things right, such as how to select the right data scientist positions, how to prepare for data science interviews in the right way, and how to study efficiently. I realized that we never talk about how to deal with failure or negative feedback, but this is a such important topic. Learning how to do things right is important, but it's even more important to know how to deal with situations when things are not in your favor, because that is almost inherent to the data science job search process. In fact, it's a part of any job search process. What I have observed while working with clients and students is that many people become discouraged because they failed to get interviews or they failed some interviews. They are unmotivated by rejections and negative feedback. They become less confident and cannot move forward in the process. Many people give up because of failures. So today, we will go over how to deal with failure, how to deal with self-doubt when you get negative feedback or rejections. We will be focusing more on the inner mental game of the interview process, specifically looking at how to respond to failure and criticism during the process while still building confidence. If you are struggling with failing interviews, processing rejections, or feel you have been stripped of all your confidence, this video is for you. I hope it will be helpful not only in your job search, but also in your career in life in general. To help understand this problem and how to tackle it, I'll be talking a little bit about my own experience, as well as sharing with you two tips on how to learn from failure while building confidence. These tips are things that anyone can use, not just data scientists. Let's start by talking about my own experience. I personally have experienced a ton of failures in my own job search. I have failed to get interviews from hundreds of applicants applications I sent out, and I have failed dozens of interviews, both technical and non-technical. And for some of you who know that I was laid off in 2019, I actually was laid off right after one of the best performance reviews I have ever had. You may have watched my last few videos and know that I got multiple data scientist job offers, but the fact is that I have failed many more interviews than the offers I got, probably three to four times more. Even though I ended up joining my dream company, I experienced quite a few failures to get there. Not only have I failed many interviews in my own job search process, when it comes to my journey from being a data scientist to content creator and a career coach, I also received my fair share of failure and criticism as well. It has ranged from people criticizing things such as I shared too much insider information about data science interviews, to my content being too high level and not practical, to those questioning my very intentions in sharing my knowledge and creating those videos. Now, to be honest with you guys, some criticism really hurts me, and I thought about quitting many times. I thought about not creating any videos anymore. I told myself many, many times that I'm not built for this. I don't have strong communication skills, nor do I feel comfortable in front of a camera. But as you can tell, I'm still doing this because I know that I shouldn't let anyone's negative feedback or criticism impact what I'm really passionate about and what I really want to do. And that is, I believe everyone deserves their dream job and I want to help you get there. Also, the failures I have experienced are part of the reasons I continue making videos, because I believe by sharing what I have learned the hard way, it will make your job search easier and more productive. Okay, so I know from personal experience that not letting failures stop you is important. Coming to peace with your failure is vital for maintaining your motivation and confidence. But how do you actually do that? I have come up with two tips on how to probably internalize helpful feedback and build confidence in my own experience dealing with failures and I want to share them with you. But before we get into those tips, I want to tell anyone struggling with confidence issues that how common rejection and failure is in the data science space and the larger tech industry. I was laid off right before one of the best performance reviews I have ever had. So if you are struggling with some failures, just know that we all have been there. You may start doubting your skills, then your career choice, and even your personality. But you can overcome this, and the tips I'm gonna share with you will help you do that too. Now, let's get into my two tips to help you respond to failure and build confidence. The first tip touches on a change in mindset that can alter the way you view failure, while the second tip deals with filtering helpful and unhelpful feedback. The first tip involves adopting a particular mindset during the interview process, and that is 
there's no failure, only more data. Throughout your job search process, adopt the mindset of a data scientist. I know you are a data scientist, but what I mean is that you need to adopt the mindset of a data scientist when you search for jobs and approach interviews. You may fail an interview or a few interviews, but that does not mean you are a failure. You are not failing or passing interviews, you are gathering data. You are gathering data by doing interviews. The more practice you do, the more data you gather, which will tell you exactly where you need to improve. You can use the feedback from those failures to make improvements. This entire interview process isn't just about getting a yes, it's about learning. And if you treat every interview as a learning opportunity, you will improve your interview skills. With this viewpoint, it doesn't matter how many unsuccessful interviews you have had. Each interview is a still valuable learning experience that may help you achieve your goals later. So how can you tell if you have this mentality? When you start to view getting interviews and interviewing as a learning process, instead of something you absolutely need to get a yes on, you will know you are on the right track. I get that this is something that can be hard to embrace, especially for those of us in an ultra-competitive field like data science. But adopting the no failure, only more data mentality can change your life. This is because you will begin to see things as more than just a win-lose game that doesn't really exist in the first place, and you will be able to focus more on what you can learn from each failure and success. Also, you don't have to only use this tip when interviewing. It's a great way to look at other aspects of life as well. It took me some time to adopt this mindset myself, but since I have, I have changed my views on many things, and of course, it drew lots of positive impacts to my career and my life in general. The moment you fully adopt it, you will have a very different perspective on failure and feedback. Learning from feedback is important, but listening to everything can be draining and even crushing. And this leads us to my second tip, which is to ignore the noise and only learn from constructive feedback. It means only listen to and internalize constructive feedback and filter out unhelpful feedback. What I have learned so far from my own experience is that at the end of the day, you have to be able to tune out unconstructive feedback. In short, you have to learn to not care. Filtering out the unhelpful feedback you get and ignoring it will help you stay sane and confident while you work to improve at the same time. But how do you tell the difference between constructive and non-constructive feedback? What exactly is constructive feedback? Constructive feedback is generally something that you can do something about such as improving technical skills or soft skills. This is opposed to unconstructive feedback, which focuses on things you are powerless to change. For instance, if you are told that your A-B testing knowledge wasn't strong enough, or the company is looking for candidates with stronger communication skills, you know something that you can work to improve. However, if you are told that the problem is something that you cannot really control, for example, the company is cutting the budget and there's no headcount for the position, or the company being unprofessional in the job search process, such as not giving you any instruction on upcoming interview, or even not showing up in interviews, then it's best to adopt a different mentality and ignore the result. Now you know paying attention to constructive feedback can help you improve. But how do you go about getting this good type of feedback? If you have interviewed with a company and the company gave you a result, either they want to move forward or they reject you, you can ask for some sort of feedback as to why they made that decision. Then you can decide if the feedback is constructive or not. Well, as much as we all would like to believe otherwise, the interview process can be a difficult place to get good feedback. With some positions interviewing hundreds of candidates, the chances of getting any sort of response tend to be close to none. This is why I highly recommend doing mock interviews with others before the real interview and taking mock interviews seriously. Mock interviews are often the best chance you will get some quality feedback and hopefully learn where you can improve. Also, to make the most of constructive feedback, I highly recommend making an action plan to ensure that you follow through with working on improvements. So in general, the goal is to look for constructive feedback that will help you improve in the future, while at the same time ignoring hurtful results and unhelpful feedback. Now that we have discussed the tips, I want to reiterate, we all experience failures in our lives, and we have all been there before. It's how we choose to respond to them that make all the difference. No one is perfect, and we all struggle through setbacks, mistakes, and failures from time to time. 
You can overcome these setbacks and you can even learn from them. All right, we have covered a lot in this video, so let's summarize. First of all, your failures are not what define you. Just because you didn't do well in an interview or didn't land the job you wanted doesn't make you a failure. It's only when you let those temporary setbacks stop you that you are truly defeated. As you work through both mock and real interviews, remember to learn from your mistakes. But don't let them own you and don't internalize failure. Work to see your failures as more data that you can learn from and you just might change your outlook on life. Also, you will never be able to make real progress without any failure and that the feedback you listen to should involve something you can actually improve upon. Speaking of constructive feedback, remember the mock interviews are good practice to get constructive feedback that you can use to improve your performance before the real thing. Failure can be a wonderful learning tool. It's not the end if you don't let it be. So there you have it guys, my top two tips for responding to failure and building your confidence in the process. I hope you have enjoyed watching and learning something along the way. Make sure to comment with any questions or comments you may have. I promise I do read them and I often find them really helpful in planning and thinking about what videos to make for you guys. Finally, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all the videos that I release around here. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. I told myself many, many times that I'm not built for this. I don't have strong communication skills. <sighs> why, why, why? I know you are a data scientist, but what I mean is that you need to adopt the mindset of a data scientist. Oh. We all struggle with thoughts of self-doubt and that can extend beyond interviews. You may start doubt doubting, self-doubt, doubting. You may start doubting yourself, doubting. Stop doubt, stop doubt. I have come up with two helpful tips on how to probably internalize helpful feedback. Oh. I have come up with two helpful tips on how to probably internalize helpful feedback and build confidence in my experience dealing with failure.